TheMarshallMan.com Thailand is home to more than 64 million Buddhists, with approximately 95% of the country's population practicing Buddhism. But what exactly is Buddhism? What do Buddhists believe? And who was the Buddha? Well, today I have a unique opportunity to sit down with meditation master and Thai Buddhist monk Prat Ajahn KK to ask these crucial questions and most importantly, find out more about Buddhism in Thailand. Okay, so Prat Ajahn KK, thank you so yes. much for agreeing to do this interview today. You're welcome. So the first question that I have is, is Buddhism a religion? Very good question. Well, the core teaching of the Buddha, Buddhism considered as a philosophy or a way of life. Buddhism is a practical method for liberating oneself from suffering. That's why the ultimate goal in Buddhism is called Nirvana. So what we say, Nirvana Paramang Sokang, it means enlightenment is ultimate happiness. Okay? So overall, Buddhism is a way of life. That's why, according to Buddha's teaching, Buddha said, don't believe me, don't believe my teachings. Keep investigate or examine until you find the truth. And other hand, if you go to a Buddhist country like in Thailand, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Laos, if you see in their culture, time, uh, temples, Buddha images, offering, lighting the candles, praying, it looks like a religion. So you can say Buddhism also a religion, part of the culture, okay? But it's not exactly like a other kind of religion, not like a Christian or Islam or Catholic or Jewish or Hinduism, okay? Because Buddhism is not based on the belief or faith. It's based on the practice. Thank you for your question. So you spoke about Nirvana. Yes. And you said that Nirvana is freedom from suffering, it's happiness. Yes, ultimate happiness. Ultimate happiness. So yes. would this be the same as enlightenment or is enlightenment and Nirvana two different things? Actually, you know, the ultimate goal in Buddhism, it's Nirvana or in English word, enlightenment. Okay. But there are different, so many different levels of enlightenment, you know. You also can get enlightened, but not fully enlightened. You know, it's like a momently enlightened. You're, you are free from suffering. Don't you feel sometimes? You know, you got a good job. You feel so happy even you have many problems. But it's just momently, temporary. Okay? So there are many steps of enlightenment or nirvana. But when you achieve the ultimate, you know, it's a fully enlightened. So according to the story of the Buddha, he, he was a prince, prince Siddhartha, his name, you know. So Buddha, he got enlightened at the age of 35. But this is not fully enlightened. It was more like a mentally enlightened. Because Buddha, he wore, passed away at the age of 80. So before he, became, before he passed away, he got old. Old is suffering. He got sick. Sick is suffering. Okay, so phys it still physically exists the suffering. Okay, but when Buddha passed away, you know, he got fully enlightened. He will he will not come back to re recycle of life. How does it not recycle? The cycle. the cycle of life, which is we consider the word is called samsara. Samsara means the cycle of life. So if you achieve the fully enlightened, you will not come back. If you come back, then you are not free from suffering, you know. 
So they are, that, that's why there is a word, why we were born, the question, you know. So according to Buddhism, we were born to achieve nirvana or enlightenment. But the people attest too much. We were born to be rich, to be actress, to be actor, you know, to, 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 to get a big home. It's all our attachment, desire, ego, you know, more like that. But actually, we were born to free from suffering. If you ask this question to the Buddhist monk or Buddhist people, I think 80% of people will say we worship the Buddha. That's why, especially the Western people, when they visit to Thailand, when they go to a temple, they can see a lot of Buddha images, Buddhist monk, Buddhist people, in front of the Buddha image, they worship, like I did. Okay? They offer many things, especially the can candle, incense sticks, you know, food, whatever. It's more like you're worshiping the Buddha. But actually, Buddha is not a god. Buddha was born in 623 BC, before Christ. He had a family, father, mother, and he got a wife, you know, Prince Siddhartha is the name of Buddha. He had a son. But when he realized that life is suffering, so he found the path of enlightened, you know. So finally, Buddha became enlightened. So people call him Buddha. Buddha means enlightened or awakening one, you know. So you could be a Buddha, no matter Christian, Islam, or Jewish, no matter what you believe or faith. If you follow the path of enlightened, anyone could achieve enlightenment. That's why there is many Buddha. I don't know if you heard or not. Someone called Siddhartha Buddha, Gautama Buddha, Sakyamuni Buddha, Fat Buddha, Laughing Buddha. You know, there are many different types of Buddha. So Buddha simply means an enlightened. So well, as my experience, I have been monk for quite long. Buddha is not a god. He's an enlightened or awakening one who became enlightened, practiced or investigated by himself. Okay, so one thing to tell you, when you see people are worshiping, it's look exactly worship, okay? But what did I learn? Before, when I was young, young I thought that we worship. You know one thing? My mom, she took me to temple, not as a novice or monk. I was like a kid. He, she worshiped in front of the Buddha image, and she asked, Hey, Buddha, please give good knowledge, good karma to my son. Take care of him. Actually, people believe in that way, you know. But Buddha cannot change us. Buddha's teaching can change us by our practice, okay? Not by belief, practice. We have to investigate. So, well, when you see people are doing like this in front of the Buddha image like this, three times we do. It's more like a worshiping. It's not exactly called worship. It's called bowing to show respect. In Thai language, we call why. Why means bowing. Okay? Why pra? Pra means Buddha. So we bow three times to show respect. So first time we show, bow to show respect to Buddha as an enlightened or awakening one, or a great philosopher, as a great teacher. Second time to his teaching. Her time to his disciple or follower, after Buddha who became an enlightened. <laughs> All right, so that's why in Pali language we call Buddha Dharma Sangha, teacher teaching and disciples. So it's called threefold gems or threefold jewels. You can check from internet. All right, yeah. And when we bow three times, we say something. For example, Arahang Sama Samputo Pakawa Potang Pakawang Tang Abiwa Ademi. It's more like a praying in front of the Buddha. Okay? 100% people will think we are praying. If you ask Thai Buddhist people, they will say, We worship, we pray. When it's not exactly worship or pray. How to pray? Buddha is not a god. Okay? 
So it's called chanting. We chant in front of the Buddha. Or you can call it mantra. There are two meanings why we do that. First meaning of chanting, we do in front of the Buddha because Buddha represents an enlightened or great teacher to remind us at least to show respect to Buddha. Okay? And to memorize the teaching of the Buddha, we do it twice a day. All right? Then, other meaning of mantra is simply called mantra meditation. You know, obviously Hinduism is very old religion before Buddhism. Okay? So there's a yoga mantra in Sanskrit language. It came from that way. You know, like a mm, They focus, they concentrate on this kind, kind of Om. Um. Om um is the God, you know, the respect the God in Hinduism. You see, it's kind of praying, okay? And in Buddhist way, it's called mantra meditation. How long you do that, that long you have no monkey mind. You can concentrate, you can observe, you know. Namo tasa pakawato iti hepiso pakawarangs. You see, I have to observe focus in different tune, different level. Even some people, especially the foreigners who don't know how to do, even they don't know the meaning of mantra or chanting, they go to temple, they sit, they observe the sound of mantra or chanting when monks do that. It's easy to make your mind calm and relax. So you can find from internet, you know, mantra meditation or Buddhist chanting. Yes, the two meaning. So we don't worship, we don't pray to Buddha, and Buddha is not a god. So if you don't consider Buddha to be a god, do you believe that there is another creator, another god? Well, actually I grew up in Buddhist philosophy. So Buddhist philosophy is not based on the belief or faith. <laughs> All right? But I used to study the religion only a semester when I was a student for six months. So kind of introduction to me, the world religion. So when I observe in different religions, you know, it's all about the belief and faith, okay? So basically, if you ask this question as a Christian, I will say, yes, there is a God. If you ask this question as a Muslim, I will say, yeah, there is a God. But if you ask this question directly to the Buddhist monk who grew up in philosophy, which is not based on the belief or faith, I will say, uh, I don't know. How do I know before I investigate and find the truth? There's an example. You're a Western guy, okay? Let's say in your country has sugar. Sugar? Sweet? Sugar? Yeah? Yep. In Thailand also has sugar, okay? So let's say you have never experienced Thai sugar. So how do you know how sweet sugar in Thailand? You know what I mean? If you never test it, if you never investigate, you know, if you never, how to say, uh, prove it by yourself, how do you know it's that, that kind of test? So this is what Buddhist philosophy said. You know, not to believe or faith directly until you find the truth. Okay? So in that way, I cannot directly tell you who created the world in Buddhism. But in other religion, you know, it's, religion means belief and faith okay so different religion has different god you know it was very interesting when i was in india i met some friends like you very close to me so i have friends from different religion different background i asked like this question to them we have conversation you know so you know when i ask who create the world you know uh to christian they say god you know, and Christian has different sect, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, baptized, whatever you call. And also they believe in the different God, whatever, because the religion means belief and faith. And when I ask this question to Jewish, Juda Ju Judaism, yes. yes, they also say God, all right? Then, I asked my Islam friend, 
Muslim. They say Allah is a creator to God. Now I ask Hinduism, who create the world, they say Brahman is a God. Now I'm confused. There's only one world, but many creators. So it means the main point is religion means belief and faith in different sect or different religion. Islam say Allah, Hindu say Brahmin, Christian say God, Jewish say God. So different religion, different belief and faith. You see? And when I ask my science friend who created the world, they say it were, it were Big Bang and blast. And it, there is a part which is we call world or earth. You see, science. So that's why in Buddhism, you know, if you ask this question, KK, could you tell me who created the world in Buddhism? I will say, I don't know who created the world, you know, before I investigate, find the truth. Okay? But one thing to tell you, Buddhism talk about the truth of nature, the law of nature. You see, you know, four elements, water, fire, earth, and air. So religion said what? Different gods send at Adam and Eva, and then evolution, how to say? Yes. Sir. Started. Evolution. Yes. yes. But Buddhism talk about the truth of nature. We met by nature, we are belongs to nature. That's why they, we talk about the four elements and six senses. Most of the people know only five senses. But what is that number six? Mind, which we call thought. You know, you have, how to say, smell, taste, touch, Hearing, saying, five, right? The thought, mind, is also one of sense. When you use the word mind, are you talking about consciousness? Yes. It's the same thing. Yes. yes. The, it's a different word. Yes. So you mentioned about meditation being important and the, the use of mantras in the temples. Is meditation the way that we achieve freedom from suffering? Good question. Actually, meditation can help you, but not fully full, not like a kind of 100%. Okay? So that's why according to Buddha's teaching, Buddha taught us the middle path, balance you need. So only meditation is not balance. So that's why if you study the middle path of Buddhism, Buddha mentioned clearly three fold trainings. First, moral training. You should learn how to avoiding or abstaining from doing bad between you and others. You should start from you as well. Second is mental training. That is meditation. Mental training to purify the mind. We have mental stress, anxiety, depression, worries, tense, negative, positive thoughts, many things, you know, inside your mind. Ego, jealous, this and that, it's normally happen. So that's why you have to purify the mind by mental training, which we use meditation. Okay? So moral training, you're avoiding that. Mental training, you pure the mind. These two trainings will develop your wisdom. So when you have wisdom, you will understand the truth of nature, the law of nature. So what is the truth? Suffering is the truth. No one wants suffering, but you have to accept. You have to learn how not to dwell on that. So you need the wisdom. You have wisdom, I have wisdom, everyone has wisdom, but not high wisdom. If you practice meditation, you gain that kind of high level of wisdom. Okay? All right. So not only suffering is truth, physically or mentally. Impermanence also truth. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You get old, sick, and death. Impermanence. Do you want to get old, sick, and death? No, I don't want. But it's truth, man. You cannot avoid it. I cannot avoid. 
I lost my parents when I was young. I don't want. Still, I suffer. This is the truth I have to accept. You know, I try not to dwell on that. I understand impermanence, so I have less suffering. You know, because I'm not dwelling, and I accept the truth. See, so suffering is the truth. You understand impermanence is truth, and you will understand non-selves, no self. We talk about the nirvana, ultimate happiness, no self. So that's why if you study the three characteristics of Buddhism, you will learn anichang, dukkang, anatang. This is the Pali word. It means impermanence, suffering, non-self. Sorry, I switched. <laughs> you know, that is the three uh, characteristics of the Buddhism. You know, so you see, moral training, okay, mental training, wisdom training. That is the middle path that Buddha show. So you ask only meditation can help you or not. Meditation will help you but you are not in balance okay so that's why you know who will like to meditate i want to recommend them moral training first train your moral first then you can easily train your mental then you get wisdom okay so first second and third steps okay you have to go step by step so that's why if you go to a longer meditation retreat let's say 10 day vipassana meditation retreat. You are not supposed to make up using gold or something. You know why? Ego. ego. You know, not to have more egoness. You know, or you are not supposed to drink during 10 days retreat, like your alcohol or something. You are not supposed to, uh, how to say, uh, take smoking, you know, you are not supposed to stealing, even the misconduct, you know, not allowed. That's called the moral training, you know, that's why Thai Buddhist people or Tarawada Buddhism, they follow the five precepts, avoiding killing, avoiding stealing, avoiding misconduct, avoiding telling lies, avoiding intoxicants. It's the moral training first. You don't have to be Buddhist to follow those moral. But if you can practice this all moral training or precepts that I told you, you will have a moral life, good life. Then if you meditate, especially the formal meditation twice a day, okay, then you will get inner peace. You will have less mentally suffer. Okay? Then wisdom will develop step by step, step by step. The threefold trainings is the middle path, the path of enlightenment or nirvana. The Marshall Man .com.